so lovely to be here tonight. What a beautiful life. Give yourself some round of applause. You're so lovely. Uh, recently, um, the great filmmaker John Singleton passed away, and you know, early this week, uh, there was a funeral, a private funeral held for him, and he was uh, formally laid to rest. And without running down John Singleton's whole resume, I um, just want to make sure that I remind everyone what he really is known for. You know, at the young age of 23, with a script that he wrote in college, uh, John got his first movie, Boys in the Hood, made. And that movie went on to be nominated for two Oscars for Best Screenplay and Best Director. He was actually the first black person to ever be nominated for Best Director. And he was the youngest person to ever be nominated for Best Director. And that, of course, launched his career. It also gave birth to a wave of movies that in the 90s we called hood movies. And some people say that term affectionately, some more derisively. But the movies themselves were very important because they were movies about um, the underrepresented portions of uh, black life, but more importantly, told by black creatives. And you can credit John Singleton to a large degree with uh, spearheading that movement. And of course, he followed in the footsteps of Spike Lee. But as far as the rash of films that came after Boys in the Hood, you have to trace that back to Boys in the Hood. And I'm talking about uh, uh, Menace to Society, Juice, Above the Rim, South Central, even Friday. You know, again, you have to go back to John Singleton and give him credit for for really sparking that movement. But what I really want to talk about, just as a way to honor John Singleton, um, is the story of how he made Boys in the Hood. Because if you think about it, this is a kid fresh out of college, you know, a script that he wrote as an undergraduate. Um, a producer, you know, got hold of the script and they decided to, to make it. And he ended up having a meeting with Columbia Pictures. And at the time, it was customary. First of all, it was rare for movies like this to be made, just movies about the black experience. But what was also noteworthy is that when they were made, they weren't allowed to be told normally by black people, especially when they were produced by the major studios. So John, as a 22 year old, is in there meeting with the executives and they basically tell him, OK, we'll make your story, but you can't tell it. And of course, he says, no, I'm the person who's going to direct it. So they come back and say, hey, we'll pay you six figures to just be attached as the writer and producer and we'll let somebody else do it. Now, you can imagine, you know, how how <laughs> amazing a six figure check looks to someone who's fresh out of college, someone who could easily say, well, let me just take this check now and then I'll write something else and then maybe I'll get a chance to direct that. But that's not what John Singleton did. John Singleton said, no, you can keep your six figure check. I'm going to direct this movie and it's going to be a success and it won't be made unless I direct it. He stuck to his guns. He stood on a strong and they relented and he was allowed to direct the movie. And from there, the rest of they say is history. The, mo the movie went on to be a huge financial success, a huge critical success. I believe it had like a 15 minute standing ovation at the, at the Cannes Film Festival. Again, the two Academy Award nominations launched the careers of countless people i mean morris chestnut cuba gooden jr uh, regina king um ice cube i mean just absolutely legendary careers people who are giants now if you look at what regina king and cube and everyone else is doing people who are giants he launched their he launched their careers because he has so much faith in both his product and in the people that he selected and so just as a tribute to him and as an inspiration to all the other filmmakers um, out there because he inspired so many of us there was a period of time where there weren't very many people to look up to as filmmakers and John Singleton was one of those very few people who made it seem like being a filmmaker was possible and the way he did it um, so so brashly and confidently at such a young age it really instilled a lot of confidence in everyone else that something like that was actually possible it wasn't just a fantasy I personally never had the opportunity to to officially or formally, you know, meet John Singleton. I have met him before. I've run into him at parties and and he was just as he was always described to me, very cool, very personable, just a, a warm guy and just had a good spirit and 
he just seemed like a very pleasant person to be around. I often watched his interviews and read articles about him just to kind of get tips as we always do. And it's one thing that he would mention a lot. It was being confident and moving without fear. And when I think about the notion of moving forward in your career and not being hampered or controlled by fear, I think of that 22 year old sitting in a meeting with top executives from a major studio, never directed a feature film in his life. And these men who are powerful and experienced are telling him that we'll do your story, but only if we take it from you, only if someone else does it with more experience and here's some money. And when I think of that 22 year old looking those men in the face and saying, no, not only am I going to do it, but it's going to be a tremendous success. Then he goes out and does just that. I just can't think of a better example of living your words, because one thing you never want to be is an unpracticing philosopher. And that's one thing that John Singleton was not. Um, He walked it like he talked it. He practiced what he preached. And I think that's something that we can all take to heart. And um, and all of us, I believe, love him for that. And we will never forget and we'll move forward with those jewels that he gave us and hopefully pass them on to someone else because we appreciate the brother and all that he contributed to the game. And, uh, and may he forever rest in power. This one for you, John. So 